Okay, so let's try this video for like the third time I'm recording this. Um, the business has been going really good this summer. The only downside was we were really um, we were really slow because there was hardly any lawns to mow. I did a bunch of landscape work and uh, stuff like that with the loader instead of mowing lawns. But hopefully next year goes a little bit better. But as far as snow, I have way more contracts than I ever had before. Um, but today, what we're off to is I'm going to go grab the little trailer and then I need to run out to a different property and change some switches and a piece of equipment and then also need to grab another lawnmower that sits out on that property and service that one. This thing's all serviced but it's been out in one snowstorm already. This thing's all serviced, just needs to be washed and put away. Um, this thing here, the first snow tomorrow, I broke the control cable right as I came home. But uh, I'm going to probably just rinse this thing off a little bit. Um, I need to figure out a better fuel storage system yet. Uh, yeah, so we got some filters in here to service that piece of equipment. I'm going to go grab. And there goes my brake clean. Ah. But let's go grab that. We'll back that out and then we'll start washing in here because I got the heat turned down on here. We're up to 65 in here. Um, so let's go run and do that stuff and then we'll be back to uh, to um, grab a, to service that. And we'll do a little bit more explaining here. Lock that door. Let's come out here. By the way, we put a diesel heater in here. So before I was rudely interrupted by a spam caller, we put a diesel heater in here. One of the Amazon ones, and it's so nice because it actually stays warm in here. But, um, so I kicked that on here a little before I left, and that heated this up in here really nice. But, uh, I need to go grab a screwdriver yet. Let's toss that one in there. Let's toss that one in there. I forgot my screwdriver and a wire cutter. So let's go do that. Open this door. And um Yeah. Yeah. Screwdriver. What size do I want? Get my little one. I'll take that one. Take that one, and we'll take this guy, and we'll take a little bit of heat shrink tubing if I have some. Do I have a lighter in here yet? No lighter. I'll have to figure that out if we need one. But, uh, yeah. So annoyed. There we go. Set that in there. Okay. Let's go grab the little trailer. And uh, I'll explain here more about why I haven't posted very many YouTube videos and uh, what has all been going on. That's the wrong key. Health wise, as far as feeding tube and all that stuff. So. Let me get the trailer and we'll get back. So that's what we came here for. But um, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you guys missed my little summer project, my spring project. Um, yeah, we're packed in here tight like sardines. That is a 1940 John Deere B. Um, I got this thing in non-running condition. Built a nice step for it. Built the flagpole for it. Um, repainted it. But this thing runs, drives, works, and uh, there's videos of it on Instagram. Let's see if I can step down here without breaking my neck. Oh, do I trust that pallet? Yeah, I was working on that pallet. But, like I said, 1940s John Deere B. Rebuilt the carburetor, rebuilt the magneto. Uh, did a bunch of other work on it. But um, this is, the sheet metal is original paint yet. I just buffed it. So that looked, turned out pretty nice, but like the frame rails, the engine, the flywheel, the axle, rear axle back there, housing, 
I repainted all that just because it was pretty beat up, but yeah. She's a quite nice little thing. And uh, if you haven't seen some of the videos on that, I highly recommend you follow me on Instagram. You'll actually be up to date. But if you want to see that stuff, you got to go back a few months to check that out. But um, yeah, that was my little spring project. Oh, we came here for has this little trailer. So let's get this guy out of here. You guys want to watch? Sure, why not? You guys can sit on my pallet here. There you go. You guys actually stayed standing up. So, let's get on with that. I'm gonna go grab the piece of equipment, change out them switches. Now when I get back home, I'll explain more what's going on with my health situation. There you go. Off to the races we go. Oh yeah, and that diesel heater is super nice. Because the whole time I was in there, the side by side wasn't running. But my little diesel heater was running in here. It doesn't use very much power. So it works out good because you don't got to run the side by side the whole time. But let's get on with it. So, step one remove that side switches. Step two replace side switches. Step three get the fuck out of here because it's cold out here. There's no heat out here. But let's quickly make this work. Oh, there's the Jalaposaurus. This is... Yeah. This thing gets the crap beat out of it. And still keeps running. I don't think this thing was ever designed to mow <laughs> tall grass that was this high. But, uh... Yeah, we just grabbed that home. We're gonna service that. But I want to do it in a heated shop instead of out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Amazon game. But I needed a couple blocks to get off the trailer. So let's get some equipment washed up here. I want to keep this one anywhere it's warm yet. I'm going to back that out. I'm going to wash this one and this one first. Then I'll rinse this guy down. And uh, yeah, we'll get some stuff shuffled around here and get some equipment washed. Okay, so let's talk about my health issues now. See, that's kind of part of this channel now, I guess. Yeah, five, can, five gallon gas can is fucking heavy. Uh, um, so, 
this um, past year. It wasn't too bad with just the feeding tube, but I was always getting tired so easily and just run down and wore down and I would sleep so much. I could sleep 10, 11, 12 hours a day, it wouldn't bother me. And um, it just was whooping my ass, whooping my ass. And comes July, it was super hot out. And uh, I worked, 4th of July weekend was super hot and we worked almost every single day um, that whole weekend. Built a horse pasture in that weekend. That's everything from working the land to putting posts in to running fence to the whole nine yards. And I just was whooped. And uh, comes Monday, I'm like, you know what? I fucking wonder. Called my primary care doctor and I'm like, hey, how do you know if you're dehydrated? <laughs> She's like, um, go to the hot, go to the ER. I'm like, okay. Went to the ER. We did some blood work, and yep, I was dehydrated. Two liters of IV fluid, and I felt amazing. Like, better than I have for a year or two years. Like, really, really fucking great. It solved some other symptoms I've had that weren't related to dehydration, but it solved them too. But within five or six days, I started feeling like crap again. So, went back to the ER again dehydrated again. Two liters of fluid. Felt great. Five, six days later, started feeling the same way. So in that meantime, I made an appointment with my primary care and I'm like, hey, what's your thoughts on this and what the hell's going on? And she's like, she talked with the uh, doctor who does my uh, feeding tube and they both decided that I should just keep going to get IV fluids because obviously what I'm getting through the feeding tube isn't quite enough but um, they did question I do have questions about some other stuff and uh, that may relate to this but um, we haven't ran the test on that yet I actually see a doctor at the end of January here to have tests ran on that to see if that plays a part into why the IV fluids help but Anyways, they set it up where I can go to the hospital and get IV fluids three times a week. So I would just go to the hospital three times a week and spend an hour there and get IV, a liter of IV fluid three times a week and felt great. Well, in the meantime of trying to get that set up, I ended up going to the ER two more times. Um, and both times I was dehydrated then too. So anyways, long story short, we got it set up where I was going to the hospital three times a week for IV fluids. Well. My veins suck in my arms, so they look really good. Like you look at that, oh, you'll get an IV started in that really easily. You look at my arm up here, you know, you'll get an IV started in that really easily. Nope. Would blow out or pop or just not great at my veins, which no idea why. But um, so anyways, after uh, about a month and a half, two months of doing IVs in the arm, they're like, hey, if we're going to keep doing this, we should probably place a port. So I have an implanted port placed in my chest where they can just go onto that. So there's a port right here. And it's just a hard little plastic piece. Then the, the tubing from that comes up into my neck here and goes into your jugular vein and down towards your heart. But um, that made it so much easier. So that works out great. Still go to the hospital three times a week for that, but I'm like, I question my primary care doctor. I'm like, you know, I take care of the feeding tube stuff myself. I've watched him do this access to this port and deaccess this port hundreds of times now, or dozens of times. Um, what's your theory on teaching me how to do it at home? She's like, oh, well, we can set that up. So we're on week four of trying to get that set up. and. Uh, I think we're finally close, but it's a whole weird goofiness of home health nurses and infusion pharmacies and specialized pharmacies to get the fluids and whole cluster F. But um, we're finally getting that to where hopefully in the next week here I'll be able to start learning how to do it myself. Um, but they get a little bit iffy on that because it's a whole sterile process and that because it goes towards your heart and if you get any infection or bacteria infection you get sepsis or 
have severe bad blood infection that could kill you. So, yay. But um, finally got that set up. So hopefully I'll be able to start doing it myself and then I can do it later at night and that. But doing the IV fluid, I felt great. And like I said, I've had problems for years where when you bend down, like if I bend down or get up or sit up from sit, laying down in bed, I'd get dizzy. That's all gone away, which is a different condition that can cause gastroparesis, which is the stomach issue I have. So you put all that together and you kind of got to question it and be like, huh. So that's why I'm going to see a doctor comes January to question him about this and look into this a little bit more. If that could be why the IV fluids are helping because a common treatment for that is IV fluids. Okay, so I forgot totally where I am, so I gotta watch back some of my video here and uh, figure it out, but it's like 24 hours later. Yeah, we had a snowstorm. This thing doesn't even look like the same lawnmower anymore. We got that pressure washed, oil change serviced, buffed. She's shiny now. Got it a little bit of job cleaning the deck, but we're even. I hate this dumb thing. You need two hands to do that, but engine looks pretty good too. But uh, there's this one other thing I was gonna wipe down on it. A rubberized set. Oh, what's up here? Gonna wipe off this grill yet, and uh, I'm gonna finish up the rest of that video here in a little bit. Probably when I go sit down, because I just did a crap ton of lawns today. Plus this, but I just want to finish this off so this can go back. But we're just gonna wipe these down. Make that black look really nice. Wipe off the John Deere emblem. It's the little things. There you go. Pretty. And my toolbox needs to be cleaned off again. But I'm about shot. Let me set you down for one second. There you go. She looks pretty sharp, huh? Doesn't even look at the same machine. Okay. So it's like a number of weeks later. Um, yeah, I kind of got distracted after that. I got a phone call, and that's why that video kind of stopped abruptly. But um, took care of that, and then we're like several weeks later. Um, that lawn while I was working, I was gone. I'll stick in a picture of what it looked like afterwards here. But um, I was talking about that other condition that may, the other condition causes dizziness, lightheadedness, and it's a lot of it's caused due to low blood volume. And um, I questioned my primary care doctor about that, and she's like, you know, you might be onto something there. So I scheduled an appointment with a cardiologist that I see in January here, just to question it more. Um, like I said, we're several weeks on. I am accessing deaccessing my own port at home. I do have it accessed right now, and I'm gonna deaccess here shortly. But that's what it looks like when it's accessed. There's a needle in there, and then there's where you connect it. But I normally don't let it accessed um, just because it's super uncomfortable where my port is. You move your arm and it pulls on that needle. Um, but I just want to try it again. I wanted to try it again, letting it access, but it's coming out here as soon as I get done with this video. Um, where it worked out really good though to finally learn how to do it at home. And it's it's not hard, it's just technical. You gotta be very careful how you do this. You gotta be very careful you don't give yourself near embolism or infection. It's, it is a sterile process, so sterile gloves, face mask, the whole nine yards. Um, but it's not hard to do. Anyone that tells you you can't do it, don't worry about it. Um, but the whole funny story about this is the home health nurse that came to teach me on how to do this was actually, well, was actually a college instructor to teach his, teach his nursing. Um, but she works for home health company now because she actually quit working for a college and now works for a home health company and now it's actually Tomorrow is her last day and she's going to a uh, To a uh, cancer treatment center 
Um, but the funny thing about this is when she came, I was telling her about my gastroparesis and all that, and I was telling her about it, and she goes, oh, it's, so your gastroparesis idio is idiopathic, which is just a fancy word for we don't really know what caused it is the medical term. And I'm like, yeah. I go, that's what they say. I go, I got my own theory about it. And I was explaining to her about how I would get dizzy every time I stood up and that my heart rate would go from being like 60 to 120 and all this stuff. And she's giving me this weird look and I just kind of finished explaining myself and she goes, you kind of gave me chills. I'm like, why? She goes, my manager was looking at your case and her manager's son has this other condition. And um, she goes, my manager, just from looking at your case and only knowing half of what you told me now, said right straight up, I wonder if he has this, which is just fucking creepy as all hell. And really makes me really ponder if that explains and connects all the little random dots. But um, anyways, so that's where the whole medical thing is now. So the IV fluids make me feel so much better. I'm at the point where I'm doing it at home. Well, today was my first day I did it at home without the nurse here. Um, the nurse watched me do it a couple times. Well, basically I did the whole thing and she just sat there and watched it to make sure I didn't do anything dumb. Um, but today was the first day I tried it myself. And um, like I said, that port's down here, it comes there's a, it's like a cavity, it, it's a little spot, but it comes up in your neck here, into your jugular vein, and then down towards your heart. Well, that tubing can actually get a blood clot in that tubing and can stop that tubing up from flowing. It'll kind of clot up and because it's a tubing that's outside your veins, it's not flowing. So what you do is when you take the needle out, before you take the needle out, you put heparin in, which is just an anti-clotting agent that's supposed to help it from forming clots. Well, of course, the day I go to try it myself, stick the needle in, and what you do is you hook a syringe onto it, full of saline, and you pull back on the syringe a little bit, and you want to get some blood back into the syringe. Well, I got very little. And then I tried pushing it in, and the syringe went really, really hard, harder than normal. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe I missed. Maybe I missed, because you got a very small spot to hit with that needle. That needs to be in the right spot. So I took it out, new gloves, cleaned everything again, new needle, tried it again, pull back on the syringe. I get zero blood return this time. Nothing comes back. I can't pull the syringe back. I can't push the syringe in. And I'm like, okay, something's not right. Something is not quite right here. I called the nurse. She's like, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Just stop what you're doing. Something's not right. I'll be there in 20 minutes. So she comes and obviously I can't let the needle in there, half covered, not covered up and all that. So I pull the needle out, she comes and puts a new needle in. She hits the port, she goes, well I know I'm in the port. You know, it's easier for her to see doing it than me looking down, doing it like this. So she does it, she's like, I know I'm in that port. She goes, I know I'm in the right spot. And she hooks the syringe onto it, pulls back, nothing. So what ended up happening is my port ended up being clogged up today, which we kind of determined it had to do it because they drew labs out of that at Monday and it probably didn't get flushed out clear enough for some reason even though after we drew labs I ran a whole liter of fluid through it I flushed it put heparin in it when I before I deaccessed it for some reason it had a little bit of a clod to it she was managed to actually work it out otherwise I would have had to go to the hospital they put in like a special type of stuff that breaks down the blood clot um, but, yeah, so first time I try to access myself at all nurse here, that happens, which is the story of my life, but <laughs> we'll give her a try again. But we did let it access right now just to try to see if I could let it access, and I can, but it, it's super painful. Like, if I keep my arms in, it's fine, but if I reach out like this, it pulls on that needle. Very uncomfortable. Um, 
And the longer it's in, the more and more uncomfortable it gets. Like it's been in 12, like seven hours and uh, six hours. And it's really uncomfortable already. But um, yeah, so anyways, that's where we're at. That's the update. That's why there hasn't been stuff. It's just kind of been running gun this whole summer. And uh, we're back to things slowing down, me feeling better. Um, did two snowstorms already. The first one wasn't too bad. It was kind of my normal route I had last year, minus two extra properties, three extra properties. Um, but um, then the second snowstorm, we got four inches of wet, heavy snow. And everybody I contacted and contacted me and gave them a quote on that were kind of on the fence. Well, we don't know what we're going to do here. All decided that, hey, let's call the day when he goes out for a snowstorm and say, that, yeah, we can. You want you want me to come do yours, and then I also had a commercial property that has multiple properties to it, and I uh, sent an estimate to the property manager and didn't hear anything about back on it. Waited a week, texted her, and I kind of got the impression they didn't like the estimate because all I got for a response when I texted her, hey, did you get my estimate? Was a uh, yeah. Okay, I'm like, nice to know. Guess I don't gotta worry about that one. And then the first snowstorm we got, I'm on a, doing a property and all of a sudden I see an email pop up. It's a signed invoice or signed uh, signed estimate. And I'm like, oh, guess they want me to do it. And then I, 20 minutes later, I get a phone call. Hey, can you come do the properties today? And I'm like, yeah, but you're going to have to wait for me to finish up the property I'm at right now. I'm like, kind of didn't expect to do these today, so none of them were marked which made it awesome fun to do it the first time, especially with the grass being really soft. Um, but managed to do it and not rip up the lawns too bad. Um, they really didn't like the price is pretty much what I got out of it is it's more than they wanted to pay. And uh, basically I said, well, I basically told her, uh, you know, kind of the going rate. Um, I'm also the only one in town that'll touch residential properties in, at this current time. Um, we got plenty of other snow removal companies, but they will not touch. Like a, this is residential housing properties that's commercially owned. At the, but um, none of these, um, none of these guys are going to do strictly commercial parking lots and commercial buildings will touch residentials because it's just a headache to them. You know, why would you want to do fifty, sixty dollar properties when you can? knock out a thousand dollar parking lot every time it snows um, so it's not worth it to them and then to deal with the hassle of multiple contacts and multiple couple people and this person wanted done at this time this person wants it done at this time it's a whole nightmare of doing residential it's not worth it to them so it's pretty much me or guys with snowplow trucks and uh, if you don't want them ripping up your lawn it's pretty much me so I kind of got a market kind of got my little niche corner where it's it's me or whatever, so I can kind of set my own price, and uh, my price is still pretty fair, but it was what it was, so we'll see what happens next year with them, but I know I got them for signed contract for this year, so, I mean, it is what it is, um, but yeah, so, this should come out on Christmas time, so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and uh, hopefully you guys have a happy holiday. And we'll get into some more snow removal videos here, um, starting at the beginning of the year. I'll start filming them around Christmas time here. Start filming them, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. But uh, I'll try to keep the videos coming all summer, too. We'll get some other stuff on there now that actually, hopefully then we'll take care of medical stuff and that, and we'll see what happens with this doctor's appointment in January. And um, yeah, so I feel a heck of a lot better than I did.